Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. Welcome to Sticks and Stones. This is episode 27 of Sticks and Stones podcast. In today's episode, we'll find out what the girls have been working on since they've been on vacation. Julia's been knitting up lots of things, Sue's been experimenting with some new forms of art, and in today's DIY, we'll be making Sharpie marker t-shirts. Join us! Welcome back! Yay! It's been a long summer. I feel like I haven't seen you all summer long. Pretty much haven't. Here we are. If you didn't August. live so far away, I would see you more often. <laughs> a whole five blocks away. Um, no, it's okay. like we're on opposite schedules. I would come into town and she would leave, and then she would come back and I would leave. And yes. all summer it's been that way. So we're sorry we haven't been here more often yet. But we're back. Yeah. We're back, and once school gets in session, it'll be a little more regular. Yeah. Because we will have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> and we'll have free time because we'll actually have all children in school wow. for at least a half day. That's pretty amazing. This is a big step. <laughs> <laughs> that time gets sucked up fast. I'm sure it does. <laughs> I said to myself, I'm going to take this first, like the first month and just lie on the couch. <laughs> Although I'm sure my husband won't like that, but you know, that's what I would like to do. So, so what have you been doing all summer? Well, we um, actually kind of did a whirlwind tour of the Finger Lakes area. We visited some old friends this summer, which was kind of cool. I haven't been up there in quite some time. And of course, brought my car knitting, so I made a lot of little portable things. So I've made some hats. And this is a little cabled hat that will be for someone. I've kind of decided this fall that I'm not going to give hats to particular people. I'm just going to put them all in a basket and whatever hat is picked is the hat you stick on your head. Nice. Then go out the door so that hopefully they oh, will all... Oh, for your kids? Yeah. They will all fit and they'll all be stylish enough that nobody will have an issue with... I don't know, there's going to be an issue, I'm sure, but... <laughs> you just haven't thought of it yet because you're not... <laughs> you're not under, under 10. <laughs> Good but, luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> Are you knitting the basket too or no, just the hat? just the hats. <laughs> <laughs> you are way too ambitious for me. <laughs> but this is why this is Declan's hat is what it's called and it's got like a really fun cable pattern on it. Cute. So that was one and I'm wearing one. I don't normally wear hats, but I think it looks cute. Um, I think that one should be yours. Oh wait. This is mine. But it can't be. Didn't you just say they're not gonna be for anyone? No. The, yeah, some of them are. This I haven't woven the ends in yet, but this is a That's really cute. It's a flower I forget the name of it, but it looks like a flower. It's a yeah. um a beret from the new um, Handmade in the UK by Tin Can Knits, and it's inspired by a garden. So I thought that was really cool with the color. Um, this is a Tosh Vintage, and they call it Spectrum, but it reminds me of like holograms and. Yeah, with those know, colors. It's really neat. It's pretty. So. It reminds me of a peacock. Yes. The yeah. colors of it I really are like, like it. in the peacock feathers. So. so this one's mine. Nice. And uh, then I've been making lots of sweaters. Old Town is done. The knit along is done. And we did have some finishers, and they did very well. And their sweaters are beautiful. But mine has not been touched. <laughs> I just haven't. I lost the mojo, so I haven't been doing it. So instead, my little gray swatch from the last episode is now this. Top of a sweater. This is Lush. Also from... Very nice. Uh, handmade in the UK. There's the back. Wow, I'm plugging really along on beautiful. it. I got to do the rest of the body and the sleeves, and it's all stockinette, so I think I can get it done by the end of the month for fall. So that's that. My gray sweater. Um, and then I've been doing lots of jewelry, just because, you know, like, you, it's quick, it's easy, it's... Mm -hmm. and so I've been experimenting. I made these earrings. Very pretty. I can't get them out, but I made them. <laughs> I'll do a close-up, but I made this necklace. Which You've been a busy girl. Knitted. And I made these little earrings, which are also knitted. I really like those. Those are so fun. These are done with, uh, they're, it's called um, wool stainless steel. And there's okay. actually um, steel woven or spun in with the wool. So you can shape it. You can actually like stretch the pieces out and they'll stay. Huh. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. You were on a quest for this yeah. earlier this year, weren't you? I was, and I finally got some, so I was playing around with it a little bit. This is the... Um, Corally pattern from the Knitty. Make it circular, circular, oh, and then cool. it's almost a star. Yeah, it is. 
I really like these though, they're fun. It's supposed to look like coral, I think. Yeah, well it does. I like the little silver beads yeah. on the end. Very fun. And then the last thing I made, this I got this when I was in Minnesota. It's actually a button. And I sewed it onto a ring base. I just thought the button was so crazy that, I mean, not that it's very practical, but it's huge and it's sparkly and... You should wear that when you go to gallery openings. Yeah, it's like one of those kind of artsy cocktail rings. So. Yeah, exactly, when you're out sipping your wine. Darling, I think it's like that would fall half a million. <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be going for the uh, ten dollar and under so, gallery. So you're but... saying that you're not, like, not wearing that while you're making mashed potatoes <laughs> in the kitchen. No, no, no. This, is, this one's a little that's more fun. That's fun. But yeah, so that's that's what I did. I just kind of had some fun this summer and didn't really pressure myself to get a whole lot of specific things done. And I guess that's kind of the way it should be sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about you? Me, I've been, I feel like I've been in the car all summer yeah. driving places, so it's hard to be creative with your hands when you're True. driving, yeah, so you don't have really in my problem. head I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> like what? Like what? Uh, well, I actually, we, we always go on vacation to Vermont for a week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Jessica has a cabin there, and so when we're there, it's pretty low-key and we can experiment, and she has just about every other craft supply you could possibly want. Cool. So my big thing that I was determined, bound and determined to do was I was going to paint. Oh, nice. So I did these little tiny watercolors. This That's is my beautiful. favorite one. Oh, the rain. Um, the, it rained every single day. We were oh, there. gosh. But it was so great to be away. So, um, But this is my favorite because I think it actually looks like rain clouds. And, yeah. you know, it was one of those, like, you know, you put a little paint on, you add a little more, let it dry, figure it out. It's really beautiful. You know, it kind of almost looks like you let it sit out in the rain and it streaked. Yeah. You know, like it's a very natural. Yeah. So I did. This one's not very. This one's sort of a work in progress. My little ship. Oh, little I always think of Captain Jack Sparrow when I see that. <laughs> and this one. I was experimenting with, um, these two have pastels on them. Oh, okay. There's pastels here and here, and then painting around it with watercolor. Oh, nice. So, um, you know, I'm not becoming a watercolor artist anytime soon. But you could put these on the front of a car greeting card and it would look really cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, so. Anyway, so that was my big, that was my big departure for, for the summer because mm -hmm. we, I just decided I needed to do something different. Yeah. Just, um, and so this has also inspired me. I think that my friend Jessica and I are going to go take a class this oh, this nice. uh, fall, which I haven't done in ages. So the one that we're looking at is in September, and um, it's a mixed media class, oh, which is something I've never great. done. That, yeah, like taking be... all kinds of different things and putting them yeah. together in a piece. A collage and, kind of idea. Yeah, I guess wow. so. I don't wow. know. Like you know what? Fun. Yeah, I'd like to take classes doing things that I would never ever do anyway, other or otherwise. So we'll see. Um, the class is given through the uh, Pennsylvania Guild of Craftsmen, and they have a whole bunch of classes. The other one, they have a watercolor class, mm -hmm. but um, I thought this mixed media one just looked like you know sometimes you need a class to just get creativity flowing yeah. in what you're doing by doing something completely different. Yeah, so that's, that's true. the idea this whole summer of doing that. Um, and the other thing we did when we were there is we always make t-shirts every year and we were experimenting with um, the Sharpies and rubbing alcohol okay. and that's going to be our DIY today. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And that's a lot of fun. Um, you can get this like firework effect or watercolor effect from it. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that and that was, that was a lot of fun. So um, we did, oh and the other thing I was working on, I didn't get anywhere with them but I was cutting apart tin cans. Okay. Oh, for the labels? Just different shapes and colors um, just to experiment with um, you know with a different type of metal work okay you know this is pretty simple because all you need is a tin snips and if as long as you have a tin can you can cut them apart and I didn't get too far with it because every time I was about to do it it would rain yes <laughs> we'd go outside because you do make these teeny tiny little yeah, scraps of metal home. and so I didn't want to yeah this is from Newcastle beer <laughs> These are actually all from Newcastle. It's a cool looking label though. You could really but I mean, do like, interesting with it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. like this, you know, these are, they look like little fish to me. Yeah. And this is actually, this is the corner of the can where, you know, the bottom comes up. Oh, and this yeah. is the corner of the can. So it's 3D already. Yeah, so I did make a flower, but I don't know where it went. But, you know, so I was experimenting with, uh, there's a book out there about um, using tin cans to make different 
pieces of art and making jewelry and stuff. And so um, I got as far as cutting out pieces and, you know, we were like hammering them and and stamping them and, cool. and just goofing around with them. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. But, um, nice. you know, it's fun because you don't really need a whole lot. But really, every time I'd take all my supplies outside, I'd be cutting out the shapes and then it would start to rain. So then I'd have to take everything inside and, yeah. you know, and then there was all There's of us no inside. Push. and. There wasn't this year. Oh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> they were redoing the porch, so, the deck. So um, yeah. So we had a lot of fun with all the different crafts that we did Good. on vacation, and um, now we're back here, and <laughs> I'm just trying to regroup and yeah. you know figure it all out and move forward. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, ah, where is everything? I didn't put everything away. Yeah. I can't. Um, so. I know. It's been it's been interesting and fun. <laughs> Summer. So now we can look at fall and well we've been kinda of talking a little bit about what to do in the fall, like what we wanna focus on. So if anybody has a, a project they want to work on, we could do a craft along, we could do another knit along, we could do we could do anything. So That's I don't know. Exciting. If you guys have ideas, we'd love to hear them. We'd love to uh, you know. It's fun to get groups together to work on things at the same time, and um, we've had little groups, small groups, but let's see if we can uh, figure something out that a whole bunch of people want to do and do it all together. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Maybe we can crochet wire. Yeah, we could do that. Make some jewelry and make a couple of different jewelry pieces. Yeah, that would be neat. Do it. A mixed media project. A mixed media project. <laughs> Combining all of our resources into one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, um, well, we're going to do our DIY now, so uh, we'll be right back. Stick around. <laughs> In order to make Sharpie marker t shirts, you're going to start with some sort of Sharpies. These are the Sharpie brand. These are um, big permanent markers, but any type of permanent marker. This doesn't work with fabric markers. Fabric markers will not spread. They stay exactly where they are. You also need um, some isopropyl alcohol, which is rubbing alcohol that you can get at the drugstore. So you make your pattern on your t-shirt and then you take a little bit of the rubbing alcohol and a pipette or an eyedropper and you drop it on and it'll start to spread. Now you can see we put a cup underneath here and that any extra alcohol will drop through the cup and it or drop through into the cup so you're not reprinting your t-shirt. Um, and make sure that you have something inside your t-shirt, a piece of cardboard. I use placemats so that um, you don't color through your t-shirt on the other side and on the table below. So you can see it kind of spreads like a um, almost like um, tie-dye and it's still spreading a little bit and a lot of times you can see like with the green the yellow is coming out of the green and you end up with all these different colors so we can move this over a little bit to our other spot I don't know why it didn't go there <laughs> I think it looks cool that way all right Ooh, I got it in my hand and I just dragged it across your shirt I like that. okay so now you can drop it on there Else. So you can see that you get this tie-dye effect. What I did on my t-shirt is I made lines and I made it uh, look more like a watercolor. So you can see that some of this didn't spread and some did. The orange and the yellow was made with fabric markers. The black was made with a sharpie. So the black spread more and the blues and the greens spread and so it looks sort of like a watercolor painting. I also chose which areas I color this whole thing with fabric markers and sharpies and I chose where I was going to put the um, the alcohol to make that effect and so you know at the bottom we get an effect of him being in water um, and at the top I also did his beak and his feathers to make it look a little bit um, 
like a watercolor, but again, the yellow was done with fabric markers, so it didn't really spread. Now, how should we care for these shirts when we're done? I would try putting them in the dryer. I noticed when I washed this that it faded a little bit, so I'm wondering if putting it in the dryer to heat set it first would work better, or ironing it before you um, actually truly wash it. Because um, the colors will fade a little bit, because they're Sharpies, they're not fabric markers. But um, other than that, you can just wash and wear it. And we discovered that you do need to wash your shirts first. Yes, we did, because we tried it without washing them. Um, this one actually worked fine, but I think maybe they didn't put the starch in the shirt to begin with. So you need to, these t-shirts, the white t-shirts we got at Michael's, and um, so they a lot of times put the, um, the sizing in them to, to make them stay nice and starchy and not wrinkle. And so you need to wash them first and get all of that out so that you can make, otherwise when you drop the alcohol on, it won't spread. So it looks like everybody's hard at work. I can't wait to see all of these after we throw some alcohol in there. The other thing to know is you can, this it only works with this isopropyl alcohol. Um, when I first did this, I had forgotten it and I tried a bunch of things. I tried hand sanitizer because that has alcohol in it. I tried real alcohol, or drinking alcohol. I tried gin. <laughs> I tried white rum. <laughs> they just happened to be there. <laughs> and neither of those worked. So you need to have rubbing alcohol. And I found that it didn't work on a bandana either. I'll show you guys over here. Um, I tried to do this on a bandana and it just didn't spread. So a t-shirt would be better. But experiment and have some fun and we'll show you what we did when we come back. the colors really spread out on these. The pinks and the oranges and the reds really were much more vibrant than the blues. And in fact, we found out that this one particular blue did not spread as well as all the other colors, and I'm not sure why. Um, but you can see that um, they turned out really cool. Um, and the other thing that you can do when you're done is you can take a Sharpie after they all dry, and they dry pretty quickly, and you can always go and outline some parts of your um, product to make it look, give it a little bit more definition. A um, couple things to keep in mind. One, it's best to work outside if you have kids because the rubbing alcohol can take the finish off the table or make it cloudy if you don't rub it up, wipe it up right away. And um, also make sure you launder the shirts because they did not work as well when we didn't launder them. Um, but otherwise, it's just fun to um, try this and um, Go for it. Try different colors, different techniques, different amounts of alcohol on each shirt and uh, and see how it turns out. The kids had a lot of fun doing it, I know. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks again for joining us here at Sticks and Stones, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.